Free Software Foundation, Wikipedia Audio The Free Software Foundation is a 501 non-profit organization founded by Richard Stallman on October 4, 1985 to support the free software movement, which promotes the universal freedom to study, distribute, create, and modify computer software with the organization's preference for software being distributed under copyleft terms, such as with its own new general public license. The FSF was incorporated in Massachusetts, USA, where it is also based. From its founding until the mid-1990s, FSF's funds were mostly used to employ software developers to write free software for the new project. Since the mid-1990s, the FSF's employees and volunteers have mostly worked on legal and structural issues for the free software movement and the free software community. Consistent with its goals, the FSF aims to use only free software on its own computers. History the Free Software Foundation was founded in 1985 as a non-profit corporation supporting free software development. It continued existing new projects such as the sale of manuals and tapes, and employed developers of the free software system. Since then, it has continued these activities, as well as advocating for the free software movement. The FSF is also the steward of several free software licenses, meaning it publishes them and has the ability to make revisions as needed. The FSF holds the copyrights on many pieces of the new system, such as new compiler collection. As holder of these copyrights, it has the authority to enforce the copyleft requirements of the new general public license when copyright infringement occurs on that software. The Libreboot X200 laptop, the Libreboot X60 laptop, all F objects, Inc. Lultzbot 3D printers, the Think Penguin TPE Wi Fi router, wireless and broadband router. The Think Penguin TPE N150 USB Wireless and USB, the Think Penguin TPE N150 USB L Wireless USB Adapter, the Tenoetic Wireless USB Adapter for new slash Linux Libra, the Torinus X200 Laptop by Libicity. From 1991 until 2001, GPL enforcement was done informally usually by Stallman himself, often with assistance from FSF's lawyer, Eben Moglen. Typically, GPL violations during this time were cleared up by short email exchanges between Stallman and the violator. In the interest of promoting copyleft assertiveness by software companies to the level that the FSF was already doing, in 2004 Harold Welt launched gpl-violations.org. In late 2001, Bradley M. Kuhn, with the assistance of Moglen, David Turner and Peter T. Brown, formalized these efforts into FSF's GPL compliance labs. From 2002 to 2004, High-profile GPL enforcement cases, such as those against Linksys and OpenTV, became frequent. GPL enforcement and educational campaigns on GPL compliance was a major focus of the FSF's efforts during this period. In March 2003, SCO filed suit against IBM alleging that IBM's contributions to various free software including FSF's new, violated SCO's rights. While FSF was never a party to the lawsuit, FSF was subpoenaed on November 5, 2003. During 2003 and 2004, FSF put substantial advocacy effort into responding to the lawsuit and quelling its negative impact on the adoption and promotion of free software. From 2003 to 2005, 
FSF held legal seminars to explain the GPL and the surrounding law. Usually taught by Bradley M. Kuhn and Daniel Ravi Sher, these seminars offered CLE credit and were the first effort to give formal legal education on the GPL. Hal Abelson, founding member, professor of computer science at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Jeffrey Nouth, senior software engineer at SFA, Inc., Henry Poole, founder of Civic Actions, a government digital services firm, Richard Stallman, founding president, launched the new project, author of the new general public license, Gerald J. Sussman, professor of computer science at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Benjamin Mako Hill, assistant professor at the University of Washington, Bradley Kuhn, executive director of the Software Freedom Conservancy and FSF's former executive director, Matthew Garrett, software developer, Cot Walsh, copyright and technology attorney, free culture and free software advocate, and former chair of the Wikimedia Foundation. In 2007, the FSF published the third version of the new general public license after significant outside input. In December 2008, FSF filed a lawsuit against Cisco for using GPL licensed components shipped with Linksys products. Cisco was notified of the licensing issue in 2003 but Cisco repeatedly disregarded its obligations under the GPL. In May 2009, FSF dropped the lawsuit when Cisco agreed to make a monetary donation to the FSF and appoint a free software director to conduct continuous reviews of the company's license compliance practices. Lawrence Lessig Professor of Law at Stanford University, Robert J. Chassel, Founding Treasurer, as well as a Founding Director, Len Tower Jr., Founding Member, Miguel de Icaza until February 25, 2002, Eben Moglen until 2007. Current and Ongoing Activities the FSF maintains a list of high-priority projects to which the Foundation claims that there is a vital need to draw the free software community's attention. The FSF considers these projects important because computer users are continually being seduced into using non-free software, because there is no adequate free replacement. Current high-priority tasks include reverse engineering proprietary firmware, reversible debugging in new debugger, developing automatic transcription and video editing software, core boot, drivers for network routers and creating replacements for Skype, Google Earth, OpenDWG libraries, BitTorrent Sync, and Oracle Forms. Previous projects highlighted as needing work included the free Java implementations, new CLAS SPATH, and new compiler for Java, which ensure compatibility for the Java part of OpenOffice.org, and the GNOME desktop environment. The effort has been criticized by Michael Larabel for either not instigating active development or for being slow at the work being done even after certain projects were added to the list. The FSF maintains a Respects Your Freedom Hardware Certification Program. To be granted certification, a product must use 100% free software, allow user installation of modified software, be free of backdoors and conform with several other requirements. Currently, a total of 27 products have been granted the certification, including three laptops, a 3D printer, a wireless router, and three USB interface wireless adapters. Among the 27 certified products are High Priority Projects Hardware Endorsements 
The FSF's Board of Governors includes amongst themselves professors at leading universities, senior engineers, and founders. A few high-profile activists, and software businessmen are admitted as well. Currently on the board there is one high-profile activist, and one world-class, software campaign strategist. There was once a majorly contributing programmer and businessman who lost favor badly. Founders are also major software developers of the free software in the new project. 1999, Linus Torvalds for Open Source Computing, 2001, New Project received the USINIX Lifetime Achievement Award for the ubiquity breadth and quality of its freely available redistributable and modifiable software, which has enabled a generation of research and commercial development. 2005, Priar's Electronica Award of Distinction in the category of Digital Communities. Structure Board Voting Employment Membership John Sullivan is the current FSF Executive Director. Previous members that occupied the position were Peter T. Brown and Bradley M. Kuhn. Current Board Members Previous Board Members include Legal The FSF Articles of Organization state that the Board of Directors are elected. The bylaws say who can vote for them. The board can grant powers to the voting membership. At any given time, there are usually around a dozen employees. Most, but not all, work at the FSF headquarters in Boston, Massachusetts. On November 25, 2002, the FSF launched the FSF Associate Membership Program for Individuals. Bradley M. Kuhn launched the program and also signed up as the first associate member. Associate members hold a purely honorary and funding support role to the FSF. Eben Moglen and Dan Ravi share previously served individually as pro bono legal counsel to the FSF. After forming the Software Freedom Law Center, Eben Moglen continued to serve as the FSF's general counsel until 2016. Financial Most of the FSF funding comes from patrons and members. Revenue streams also come from free software-related compliance labs, job postings, published works, and a web store. FSF offers speakers and seminars for pay, and all FSF projects accept donations. Revenues fund free interface programs and campaigns, while cash is invested conservatively in socially responsible investing. The financial strategy is designed to maintain the foundation's long-term future through economic stability. Criticism the FSF is a tax-exempt organization and posts annual IRS Form 990 filings online. Linus Torvalds has criticized FSF for using GPLv3 as a weapon in the fight against DRM. Torvalds argues that the issue of DRM and that of a software license should be treated as two separate issues. Recognition on June 16, 2010, Joe Brockmeyer, a journalist at Linux Magazine, criticized the defective by design campaign by the FSF as negative and juvenile and not being adequate for providing users with credible alternatives to proprietary software. FSF responded to this criticism by saying that there is a fundamental difference between speaking out against policies or actions and smear campaigns, and that if one is taking an ethical position, it is justified, and often necessary, to not only speak about the benefits of freedom but against acts of dispossession and disenfranchisement. 
the free software movement has become recognized as a global cultural movement, and the Free Software Foundation has become recognized as an industry player in software, publishing, economics, jurisprudence, politics, and other cultural realms. Key players and industries that have made honorific mention and awards include Article 2, Sector 1, Number, Election, and Qualification the present members of the corporation shall constitute the voting members. Thereafter the voting members annually at its annual meeting shall fix the number of voting members and shall elect the number of voting members so fixed. At any special or regular meeting, the voting members then in office may increase the number of voting members and elect new voting members to complete the number so fixed, or they may decrease the number of voting members but only to eliminate vacancies caused by the death, resignation, removal, or disqualification of one or more voting members. In addition to the right to elect directors as provided in the bylaws and such other powers and rights as may be vested in them by law, these articles of organization or the bylaws, the voting members shall have such other powers and rights as the directors may designate.